I, uh, when I broke my ankle, I got these zip-off um, trousers and they're a godsend. There she is, look. So where's that, where's that actually, where's the actual... So, about there... Is it? Is, ...is where it's chopped off. So I've got that much lower leg. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, the rest's... I'm gonna get my other leg out just because it looks a little bit strange, doesn't it? Warning, this video contains sporadic images of injuries that some squeamish viewers may find disturbing. Now then, um, just in the interest of honesty and uh, full disclosure, I thought it's only fair for me to share with you the fact that actually um, some days are shit in hospital and today is a particularly shit day. Um, I'm exhausted, I'm in pain, I'm fed up. Um, yesterday, they uh, they took the cast off my leg and, and let me stand up for the first time, <sighs> which was great. It was, it, I was excited about the prospect of being vertical and standing up, but um, man, did it hurt, it really hurt. Uh, and it kind of reminded me of you know, it reminded me how injured I am and how long this whole thing's going to take before I can, you know, walk again and get back to living a normal life. Um, also, you know, the, the fact that because I've been pretty much laying down for the past five weeks now, uh, six weeks now actually, um, you, 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 your heart weakens so that when you stand when you stand upright you know it's struggling to pump blood to your brain and um i just i just got really dizzy went really lightheaded my leg was hurting um my long leg that is because i've got a long leg and a short leg now there's a lot of you probably know what happened um but for those of you do that don't um i had a, a crash and uh yeah some some fairly serious leg injuries can you remember what happened? No, I can't remember it. Really? Nothing? No. no That's probably remember. a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't want to, it's somewhere I don't want to be. Uh, and it hasn't, like, some, some people said, oh, it might come back in bits, and it hasn't. But I don't want it to, like, I'd rather it didn't. Because mm. a few people rode past me on the, on the road and said, um, yeah, it looks a bit of a mess. So, and, uh, and I'm led to believe there was a lot of blood. So this femur came, uh, uh, sorry to be a little bit gory, but like, these are the details. This femur came out my leg. Um, and actually, so you could look at it, you could see it? Well, I would have been able to see it if I was, well, I don't know if I could see it or not, because I don't know if I was, I think I was unconscious. I've crashed at Joey's, which is 26th milestone. I'd, I'd done, I'd actually done two laps on the 600. Came in and thought, shall I do another couple of laps or shall I just park it? I considered parking it, because you'll remember I wasn't no. feeling my best. I had big, Fucking waterly chin going on, um, and you're about to go and do the first ever mic'd up lap of the. Oh, uh, no. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, and that would. I, I was, was fuming. I was, I was really looking forward to that lap, and that would have been, yeah, that would have been uh, a, l a little bit special, but yeah, it never happened. Um, crashed. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Um, yeah, crashed at Joey's. Broke both femurs, both tib and fib. Um, the, the the femurs were really bad. That like, well, I've, I've got the X-rays. Yeah, we'll put we'll, them up. Yeah, show yeah, the X-rays. So the 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 left femur was in uh, like seven or eight pieces. So the left was worse, wasn't it? The left femur yeah. was worse. Um, that was the worst injury, to be honest. And 
uh, when I when I went to hospital, uh, I, I, well, actually, I got a helicopter ride to. I think I got. I can't really remember. You how got that a helicopter happened. ride to Nobles. To Nobles. And then you yeah. got a flight from then Nobles I got an, a, a to little Liverpool. little aeroplane yeah. over to Liverpool Airport, and then a, then an ambulance from Liverpool John Lennon Airport to Aintree Hospital, and in intensive care. Uh, Obviously. In and out yeah. of in and out of surgery. In the first, I think the first week or the first two weeks, I had, I think, ten trips to theatre to try and fix it all. Now they, they tried to fix this leg, and it had, it had like a, you know, when they put like external fixators on them, yeah. it had rods and a couple of pins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I started getting a little bit better, and I and I went down to the, like the normal ward, uh, out of intensive care, and the, they were lowering the pain relief, that I started shouting and screaming because it was really really hurting, and that was this leg. So that was when we kind of realised something was maybe wrong with this really? leg. Yeah, yeah. So this was probably a, a, a week after I'd been there. Um, As I, remember, I remember talking to you on the phone and it was when you just started to, you, you could make sense. Yeah. But at the same time, you, yeah, were, yeah. you were either holding onto the bed, screaming, yeah. or you were, you were asleep yeah. through just being knocked out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that kind of finding that balance between yeah. pain and drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Must have been. It was. It, well, it, it was lasted it for was, over a month. Yeah. It? It, well, yeah. It was. It was in and out. It was in and out of that. Um, I guess we was kind of drifting. Sometimes we was on that fine line, and I was kind of conscious and not in too much pain. But then I would drift that side of the line and just like fade away, or drift that side of the line, and I'm shouting and screaming because it really fucking hurt. So, um, so that was the catalyst for, for them to go, there's something wrong? Yeah, there's something wrong. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah. so they, they, they came and had a look at it a few times and then, because I'd been in and out of theatre a couple of times at this point, trying to fix it, trying to fix just this leg, and I, and I remember saying, look, I can't take this anymore, take the fucking thing off. And they said, there was a real good doctor called uh, Simon Scott, and he said, look, we're not going to amputate your leg. We don't use the A word in, in, in this ward. We're not taking your leg off or if we have to, it's a last resort. So I went into theatre again uh, a time or two and he said, you know, we'll, we'll do whatever we can to try and keep it. And it, eventually, after a couple more, he said, it's a lost cause, really. The, the, if, you, if you leave that leg on, it'll, it, it's going to make you really ill and you're not going to be able to, it's going to be a long, long, long time yeah. before you're going to be able to walk on it. So it was kind of like, yeah, t take it off. So the, the reason I ended up losing it was because I got compartment syndrome in it. Now, most people that have raced bikes are kind of reasonably familiar with compartment syndrome because you get this arm pump. Yeah. So, so, so it's what's happened is it's constricted, it's pumped up, constricted all the blood vessels in my calf. So my foot has effectively not had a blood supply for a couple of days and it's died. So uh, the, only, the only thing they could really do was take it off. So that's what they did. Um, at the same time, or just maybe, maybe after they'd taken it off, I started getting a lot of pain in this leg, and and I, and I knew I knew what the pain. Yeah, I started getting a lot of pain in this thigh, and I knew what it was because I've had arm pumping my arms before, and I'd had severe compartment syndrome in that leg, and I remember just saying, something needs to happen here because. I don't want to lose another leg, so I made a made a bit of a fuss, but they uh, they agreed that yeah something needed to happen. What they did was they they had the, um, it brought like a a pressure tester. No way. And it was like a, it was like a, a big fat needle on a with it with a, with a, um, a digital dial, and he jabbed it in my leg and he said it's supposed to be I can't remember what the numbers like were. One of those said, meat things you just chuck yeah a bit into, like that to, yeah to, to make sure it's the, the right temperature yeah. yeah it looked like one of them so he jabbed it in and, and he said oh. It, we're looking for about 14 PSI or whatever the <laughs> units are. So he jabbed it in, he's like, yeah, 14, yeah, 13. And he jabbed it into, because you've got different muscles yeah. in here, right? Jabbed it into the next one, it was like fucking 68 or something. And he says, oh, oh shit, yeah, yeah, we need to, uh, we need to do something about that. So that afternoon, um, straight into theatre, and they did a fasciotomy on this leg. Now, you can't see because I've got my shorts on, but there's a massive, scar on this leg it starts there and it goes all look all the way up to there basically they opened the leg up cut the 
the, the sleeve that the muscle's in, cut it off, pull it out, and stitch it back up so, it's, so it lets the muscle expand. Um, but yeah, the, the, there is a messy scar. In fact, they actually, they took the bandages off this side and that's, and, and the amputation at the, oh shit, my phone's ringing. Yeah, they took the bandages off both sides at the same time and because it was the first time I was going to see this leg without a foot on the end of it, they sent a psychologist in to sit with me and just set, you know, explain, you know, we're going to take the bandages off, you're not going to have a leg, are you ready for it? And I kind of built myself up for it, you know, I, I was prepared for it. So they took the bandages off that and like I say, I was prepared for it, so it was no big issue. They took the bandages off this side and Jesus Christ, like, it looked like... A giant It vagina. looked like a giant fanny, yeah, mm. like a big... <laughs> But a, like a weeping, disgusting, yeah, gross like a, one that's like needs it needs, needs, it needs attention. Serious yeah. gynecological help. Like it worse was, than a three-day-old festival badge. Worse. Yeah. Worse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So that. Did it that, smell as well? I didn't actually smell, and th and that, and they and they said to me. If it smells. They said if it smells, we've got a problem. Yeah. It, and it didn't smell, but it looked looked like it should smell. Um. So that was uh, quite harrowing. And I needed like, needed five minutes, you know, when you'd like, fucking hell, like, uh, felt a bit queasy, like I was gonna be sick, but I was all right. So, um, yeah, that was kind of the first, that's the summary of the first two weeks in hospital. And then after that, it was just a case of, um, been really bored. Well, I don't know if you can see, but this is a bit of a milestone. This is the first time I'm gonna take a shit on a proper toilet in over five weeks. Ha, oh, delightful. You know them buttons you get? The morphine. The morphine yeah. buttons, yeah. So it's like, it gets you a, gives you a shot of morphine, but you can only press it once every three minutes. So it's kind of like a, you literally- so you're counting you're down. Wet. Yeah, it had a little light on it. it. had a little light on it that lit up after three minutes. So I'd, I'd, and my eyes were, couldn't see it, like, cause I'd had a bang on the head. Only this eye worked properly. That one was all fuzzy and like looking everywhere else. So I was, I remember holding this thing right up to my face so I could see when the light came on and I was clicking it. The pain was so bad. I, 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 I can't, out. Yeah, I was tripping out yeah. just with the pain. I was like tripping out. And I can remember I was, I was holding onto the bed, fucking screaming because I thought that I was in a boat. And I, and I thought the, this bed, I thought this boat was like, slapping against, you know, when you're in like rough season, it's yeah. slapping against yeah, yeah, the rocks. Yeah. And I'm like, fucking get me out of this fucking canoe now. I, did, I thought if I, if that rope untethers, I'm going to be out in the high seas and I'm never going to well, be seen again. That's what drugs do to as well. Yeah, yeah you, so you, it was, you, it was you a bit, you, it were, was, you thought you were tripping out on the plane, you thought you'd been ki kidnapped, didn't you? No, that one on the plane, that was. It was a helicopter. Yeah, it wasn't the, oh, that was in the. That was in the hospital. That was in no, the hospital. No, that was. Oh, well, I mean, maybe yeah, that happened, yeah, maybe that happened did, in the yeah. plane as well. I can't yeah. remember that. But I can remember being in the hospital and saying to Kay, saying to my girlfriend, um, you need to get me out of here. She says, wow, what's wrong? I said, this isn't a real hospital. She said, it is. It, I said it fucking in. There was three or four things, like real daft things. Like I can remember that the, the nurse's name badges didn't say NHS on them. And I thought, that's fucking weird. There was something else. One of the doctors said something that doctor. One of the doctors had a real neat handwriting, and I was like, "Nah, this is all wrong. This is all fucking wrong." And you know when it, something gets in your head. Yeah. And and Kay said to me, afterwards, she said, "You was that. You was that convinced that you started convincing me." And Kay was like, "Fucking oh, hell, is, God. is it?" <laughs> <laughs> so, but obviously, it was a real hospital, and they were real doctors, and they were real nurses, and they would the the um, they, they all, despite my. Um, shouting and screaming. I wasn't shouting and screaming at them, I was just shouting no. and screaming because I was in pain. I mean, I, they all looked yeah. after me really well, so. Each, Shit, each and every one of your injuries is enough to put anyone off their feet, so to speak, yeah. like for, for years, you know, really. Well, yeah, yeah. And, but, I then, mean, but then when you put them all together and that, that amount of trauma, then, yeah. you know, you, I, I work, races are different, aren't they? Yeah, I think so, I think yeah. They, I think they are. I, I worked out that um, I've had or, or there's, there's seven or eight different s separate injuries that each one of them would have, would have hos hospitalized me. But yeah, all together is a, is a bit of a pain in the ass. But yeah, but like you're right, the, I want to get better and I think you get, 
if you want to get better, you get better a lot faster. Yes, than, definitely. I, I, what yeah. we do, uh, I go to a, uh, so obviously I'm out of hospital now, I'm at home, I'm, I'm semi on my feet using the crutches, um, but I'm not allowed to walk yet because the, the, the fractures to my, particularly my left femur was too bad and the doctors are still concerned that it might be a little bit weak, so not allowed to fully weight bear through this side. So I can get around on crutches, but it's not, I still can't walk. Um, but I've been going to, twice a week, I've got physio, and it's like a, it's a, a, a class for amputees. Is it? So there'll be like me and two or three, sometimes it's just me, no one else turns up, but sometimes it's two or three other amputees, and most of them are um, a lot older, and they're, they're, they've had an amputation because they've had um, diabetes yeah, or yeah. some vascular yeah. condition that's like bad, but you know, had to have the leg chop off, our leg or, or two. And you can tell who is going to get better. You can just see the people that... You can see it in their faces. Yeah, you can see it in their faces. The you can see the... Yeah. the like, some, you know, the, the physios are sort of helping them along and they're kind of like, oh, it's a bit hard, I can't do this. And as soon as the physios are saying, right, okay, that's enough, they sit down and that's enough. Whereas I, I want to do... I want, I want to do more. And there's other, other lads there that, that are the same, you know, that you can see they want to... Right, shall we try on crutches? Yes, I'll try on crutches or... You know, should we try you up the stairs? Yeah, definitely, let's have a go at that. They're the people that are gonna get, going to get better. The more you do, the, I think, the, the quicker you'll get better. Apart from if you fall over in the, uh, in the, in the petrol station. Which uh, you did. Which I did last uh, week, a week ago last Friday. I just tripped over. Because I can't feel my foot, because it's not actually a real foot. Um, can you, what, what I just can tripped you, over backwards. What can you, what does it feel like? If, well, it feels like I'm just putting weight through the end of my leg. Right, okay. But so how the prosthetic works is it doesn't... The aim isn't to, isn't to load the bottom of the residual limb. Stump, I hate the word stump, so we're going to call it a residual limb from that one. Uh, resi for short. Prozzy. Prozzy. And so, resi. So this bit of the uh, prozzy, prosthetic, um, is like tapered. So, so it's kind of... As, you, as your leg goes in, it kind of... It squashes into the side, yeah, yeah, rather than loading yeah, the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and that's that's made to measure. That's made to measure. Yeah, yeah. carbon fibre. Have another go. Go on, try again. Go on, go on, go on. If anyone's seen James Holland's, he's got a past, James from JHS, yeah. he's got a massive pasty, he's got like a pasty won, calf, but mine's like a yeah. big pink pasty. Yeah. And I think mine's gonna stay like a big pink pasty. It still looks a little bit like a minge. It looks if way... You, if in the right angle, like a... <laughs> the right you know, light. like the way it sort of, you know, like the way they bulge out? I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, the big fat ones you see yeah. on, like when the you... Prolapse ones. Pro, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like a, not, a, not a nice minge. No. Um, <laughs> now then, I've just woken up, and today marks six weeks since the uh, since the date of the crash. Um, and today is a good day because uh, I'm led to believe in an hour or two's time there were some paramedics picking me up with an ambulance and taking me to a hospital close to home. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. It'd be nice to um, be nice to get a bit of fresh air, see the um, see the outside world for the first time in six weeks. Um, I'm going on a bit of a road trip. Road trip. Well, we're uh, we're halfway back to to the the new hospital I'm going to. And I managed to persuade the uh, the ambulance driver to pull over because I got hungry. So we've um, we found a McDonald's. Bonus. I remember again chatting to you on the phone and texts and stuff, and loads of people were like, oh, well, you know, at least you're still here. You know, you're, at least you're lucky to be here. And really, yeah. at, you know, at the lowest of lows, I don't think yeah, you, you never, thought that. You never, you never think that. You never no. think, oh, well, I'm glad I'm here in hospital yeah. with two broken legs and a broken ribs and a oh, punctured lung and, and the a, back as well Let's, we haven't even talked yeah, about that yeah yeah you, yeah, you, yeah. You, you've three or four vertebrae in my back yeah yeah and that was for that was a little bit uh they went to shore with the need to operate on it and yeah. stability wise yeah so. yeah they said to me 
had I just gone in with, with the, the fractures to my spine, they probably would have operated. But because I'd been in, I spent the first four weeks laying flat doing nothing, it gave, it gave the fractures in the back a little bit of time to heal up and knit back together. And, and because they knew I wasn't going to be getting up anytime soon, and it, was going to, it, it, would give, it would give the fractures plenty of time. So they said, rather than go in and operate with all the risks of surgery, they just they just left it so and to be honest the backs feels all right it just feels like um you know when you've like had a day carrying heavy stuff or digging an hole yeah. or just yeah. like that or, I mean, or you've been motocrossing yeah it, it just feels like <laughs> yeah. i've got like a bit of a bad back and every now and then i just need a bit of a, one of them but it's not it's not a bad back that's bad enough that would stop me doing anything it's uh yeah it's, that's that's the legs job yeah um, so yeah, in answer to your question, at first I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was lucky to be there, but I think probably after a few weeks when I kind of understood what was the, the severity of the injuries and therefore the, the, how big the crash must have been, yeah, that's when I kind of realised actually, yeah, it, it could have been worse, probably should have been worse. Um, I've obviously hit something really hard. I mean, to, to smack, the, your femur's like the strongest bone in the body and to smash them up, you've, you've hit something really hard. So if I'd have gone in, I've obviously gone in, into something, probably a grass bank, I've probably gone in leg, legs first. It was surely it was the wall, wasn't it? It might have been a wall. There yeah. is like a, there's like a, it's a, the wall. a dry stone wall yeah. there, isn't there? So maybe I've hit the wall, I don't know yeah. what I've hit. But I've, my legs, have, that, yeah, my legs have been my crumple zone. Whereas if, I, if I'd have gone in head first, then that would have been it. And it was what, 100, 120 mile an hour? I guess, yeah, I mean... It's not slow, is it? Yeah, it's fast enough yeah. to hurt. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I fully, now I fully appreciate that I am lucky to be here. And it kind of gives you a, a new lease of life, something like that. Like, I know... I can imagine. Uh, like well, I'm, I can't, but do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I feel like, actually, like, you know things that you would worry about before you just think yeah. fuck it don't even matter yeah, yeah. I don't care yeah and and like now I'm I'm going to do the things I want to do now obviously it's going to take a little bit of time before I before I'm able to do a lot of stuff but like I I just you just life's life's too short to kind of worry about stuff and I think we talked about but it's before we crash but doing the TT you come back and life's changed isn't it yeah. you come back from the TT yeah. the first TT life's cha- life yeah. changes yeah. and you see things differently in your um, your, your you, yeah. I said you're, it's really bizarre it's really difficult to explain to someone but who hasn't done the TT but it's like a your boundaries move and yeah, your, your patience is different and it's loads of different things yeah it, it's completely... like it's like you've had it's like you've had that drug yeah. that's kind of to, to get that hit again, you, you need to be at that level. So, yeah. so now everything else kind of like almost becomes mundane and doesn't matter because it's. But it, now you've had this injury. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like almost like another. Yeah, like, the same sort reset. of thing again. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just you don't worry about the things that you don't need to be worried about. I mean, what I will say is, I don't ever want to. I mean, don't be me wrong. The TT is it's. A f- a f- amazing event, fantastic event. I don't want to go back there and be part of a team again. That's for sure. Yeah, I do not want to be part yeah. of. I'll, be, I'll go media. I'll go. I'll go as a fan. But yeah. being part of a team, I'm not going through that again. No, because I mean, what you went through is something else, and I cannot imagine. I mean, it's bad enough for you know you and you know the, uh, us and your family sat there. I mean, it's safe to say, despite me talking to a few teams about going back next year. I'm not going back. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can, I, yeah, I can imagine that that bit where you're waiting and you because yeah. you don't know what you don't you just don't know. No one tells you anything, no. do you? And no. it's not like a short circuit where oh, you can just like run out the back of the pits and if they haven't come round, you can maybe go and see them. You just don't know. Yeah, and usually, yeah, I mean, you and others are pretty hot straight away. You break yeah. down, phone out. Yeah, exactly. Safe yeah, for, yeah. Uh, I always have my yeah. phone on me when I'm. Yeah, road racing for that reason because I know how yeah, everyone does, not they? Yeah, I know yeah. how stressed out the lads back in the pits get when they don't see you come round. So, a few people have said to me, "Yeah, oh, are you going to go back to the TT?" Definitely, 
But like, not to yeah, race. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't want to race there. Yeah. But like, it's it's still it's still the, the the biggest and best motorcycle event in the world ever, in my opinion. And mm. in fact, that's probably that's probably a fact, isn't it? It is it's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. It's the best race festival, whatever you want to call it. It's it's an awesome event to be part of, and just to go and watch and get pissed at, or you know. Um, so and it's a it's a beautiful little island, and it's on our doorstep. So yeah, hundred percent, I'll go back. I'm not like put off that side of it. I'd quite like to go and like maybe Marshall or something like mm. that. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But be, be be part of it in a in a different way. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to be I wouldn't want to be in a team for someone waiting for them to come round. <laughs> Loads of people have been asking us. I don't know, I've asked you before this, but I mean, when do you see yourself riding a bike again? Do you want to do that again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's changed, like I was just saying, it's changed the way I look at it a little bit. And I'll be honest, I don't want to go back and do the TT because I, um, I thought, I don't know if you can, just another Spitfire's just flown by. I don't know if you can hear me over that, but um, yeah, as I was saying, I've, I've, I've realised now that I, I, I already knew the TT was dangerous, but I thought I thought if I could maybe go and ride there at 90%, I'd be safe. I'd be, still be fast enough to do all right, but be safe. But obviously, I can't do that. Like I, I don't know whether it's the fact that I'm not able able to ride at 90%, or or uh, mate, it's I, just I dangerous at I, any. You know what it proved to me this year. Sorry to go off topic slightly, but what it proved to me this year is that someone like yourself who wasn't riding at 100% or in anywhere near 100% and you've been through that corner four times, three times already that night yeah. and did nothing differently, yeah. it just goes to show you that you cannot take anything for granted there, no. anything at all. Yeah, exactly. And it, so, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to put my life at that much risk anymore because I've got a good life. Like, I, I, like, I mean, life's good, isn't it? Like, why would you... It's, it's weird, like, I knew, I knew what the risks were before, but, like, I just... It's kind of made me realise that, fuck, yeah, actually, yeah, it is... The risk is up there. Mm. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to take that risk anymore. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to race at that level. But I still want to ride bikes, um, and I see no reason why, why I shouldn't or I can't. Like, you know, we've all seen people ride bikes with bits missing, you know, I've got a foot missing, it doesn't mean I can't ride a bike. To be honest with you, the thing that's stopping me at the minute is this leg. So I can't, I can't bend that knee any more than about 90 degrees, it just gets to there and stops. And is that just, is that better than it was? Or is that it's getting, slow it's getting, physio? It's getting better slowly yeah. with physio. I'm just every day stretching it a little bit. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'd jump on, I'd jump, if I could, if I could get on that, I maybe have a go at getting on it in a minute. <laughs> if I could get on it, I'd yeah, I'd ride it now. I'm not. It's, it's not frightened me or uh, it's frightened me off the TT, but it hasn't frightened me off riding bikes. And I still want to ride bikes because that's my whole life. My, like it's just what I do. I, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't ride bikes. And I love riding bikes. And I still want to go. Do you know the, the fun we have racing that one two five? Do you know and uh, and been in the been in the uh, position that we're in that, that that we can you know get invited on launches and get to go ride brand new like it's the fucking best thing in the world it isn't is. it like it's go like, and it's ride a rock this stars lifestyle without the money it's yeah, exactly yeah. yeah so yeah definitely want to ride bikes again and it it'll be it'll be different because I'm not I'm not gonna I don't want to I don't want to ride bikes at a level where I'm competing uh, you know. Uh, take it too seriously. Take it too yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. I don't want the pressure. I just yeah. want to enjoy riding bikes um, like like we all do. So yeah, def definitely. So when are you fucking back to work then? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't mind being <laughs> off oh. shit. Oh, you know this bad back I was telling you about. <laughs> um, I, I, as soon as I can ride a bike safely, um, I want to. I, I want to be. I want to be doing stuff. I want to. Like I said, I, I love it, and I don't know what else. Like I'm fucking bored shitless at home. Like I'm, I'm so doing so much ranking you can do in there. Yeah, oh, fuck me, mate. I've worn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 
I'm, I'm doing my physio, I'm, I'm, I'm eating right, I'm drinking hardly anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that because is that it, it slows down recovery? Just, uh, prob- uh, it's not going to help, is it? So I just thought, I'm, I, I want to get better as fast as I can. I'm Fair taking fact. fucking multivitamins, Barocca, cod liver oil, all that nonsense. I've been in a hyperbaric chamber three times a week for the past month and a half just to try and make speed up the healing process. I don't know whether it's, we talked about it off yeah. camera, didn't we? It's one of them where if there's a small chance that it might help a little bit, you kind of bite the bullet and go and do it, but it's not cheap. And um, I, just don't, I just don't know how much, how much it's helping. If, I think it's maybe one of them placebo things, isn't it? Well, I know, I know for a fact it's worked on injuries where you have one break and you want to ride and in three weeks time. Then, but the yeah. severity of your, it's not like you've got a yeah. break. You, you, I mean, how many, not only like your pelvis, when you crashed at, at uh, Brown's Hatch, yeah. I remember the doctors at Aintree, they went, what the fuck has <laughs> happened with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they looked at all these rods and metalwork and they're yeah. like, is he all right? But no, but the, but the, the amount of it, how many breaks did you have in there? And in, in all your- uh, Oh, well, things? I mean, I mean, but, but uh, uh, ankle, that bottom, of, bottom of that ankle, that tib and fib, that was smashed the fuck. But it, both, individual both, breaks. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, I mean, oh, it was no, all in, it was all in bits yeah. and pieces. Yeah, yeah. Um, so no hyperbaric chambers when I saw that, is it? I no, I, no, probably not. I probably, probably wishful thinking. My, my physio said to me a couple of weeks, well, probably a month ago, she said, "We reckon by about Christmas time, you'll be, you'll be able to walk without crutches, fingers crossed." And and I, and I thought I might be able to, but I. I I felt like this fall I had last week kind of just set me back a little bit and it, and it also made me realise that actually you can do too much. You can rush it. You can rush it, yeah. yeah. And, and um, yeah, that doesn't always help. I mean, it just goes to show you how bizarrely how popular you are when, I mean, the amount of money that the fundraiser I know, raised yeah. um, the, is, is, I thought, I, I set the goal at like 10 and I was like, oh, Actually, we get we got to nine. It was like I oh, changed to fifteen. It was like twenty, twenty-five, thirty. It was like what? And in the end, it was like ninety, ninety yeah, odd grand. Yeah, it just it? just it just ticked over ninety grand. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was as astonished as you you were. I think I, I couldn't believe it. And <clears throat> you know the 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 amount not just not just the amount of people that donated cash on there. The amount of messages on there and. And, and the amount of messages I got on Instagram, and <clears throat> the amount of comments on the, the, the videos that, that we put up, like, it, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a teary person, but like it, it made me quite emotional, just that I, I, never, I never knew I would have had so much support, like support from all over the world, mm. like people in Australia, Canada, you know, all over the British Isles, all over the world. Um, I didn't. I didn't know so many people liked me. To be honest, <laughs> I think they felt sorry for you. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah pitied me. Um, but no, it, the 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 support I've had it was just up beyond belief. So thank you to to everyone that 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 supported me and, and sent me messages and uh, donated to the fund because you know it. Like I said before, that it's it's made this the, the last few months. I've been the most difficult time in my life. It's been horrendous, but that's that support genuinely has 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 got me through it. And on them days where you've just been uh, like just just uh, just fucking shit. This is shit. I'm, mm, everything's what's the point? fucking rubbish. Yeah. What's the point? Can't be asked with it. I don't want to talk to anyone. That, you know, I read through some of the messages and it just instantly kind of perks you up and lifts you up and think, oh, actually, you know, I've got all these people behind me, all these people on my side. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't express enough how, how grateful I am and my gratitude to, to, to everyone. So thank you so much. And thank you to all the staff at Aintree Hospital, all the staff at Wishaw Hospital when I, when I went back up north. It, it was 
particularly when I first got there and it was intensive care, it was genuinely, they were caring for me intensively. It was, they were there all the time. And they even like, my girlfriend was with me for <clears throat> most of it, particularly when I was in intensive care, she was there all the time. And then the, there was a really nice nurse called Rose, who wasn't just looking after me, she was looking after Kay. She found a little room and just sit in and, you know, make sure she had enough to eat. And wow. so it, it, the, the, the care we got at, yeah. uh, in Aintree Hospital um, from all the NHS staff, like beyond, beyond, the, you know, they, they were really going, um, what's the word? Above the, beyond the... Above the, beyond the call of duty. Beyond the call of duty, yeah, that's above, it, yeah. Above and beyond the call yeah. of duty, yeah. Yeah. When I went to get the prosthetic fitted, I had like a, like a, a consultation with a prosthetist. That's the person who... A prosthetist? Prosthetist. Yeah, get your tongue around that one. Put that in your mouth and say, <laughs> koala lump. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a sit down with the prosthetist and he kind of, he, he asked me the type of lifestyle that I had and I told him that, you know, I, I was reasonably active, I want to be as active as I can be. So, so they gave me, a, they said, all right, well, we'll give you, a, give you a limb that's capable of doing a little bit more than just kind of pottering about. So this one, I mean, you can't see it, but that bit there is actually like Carbon. one of them, it's like, well, it's, it's got carbon fibre on the front and back. Jesus. But it's, but it's got like, it's one of them blades, you know, like Pistorius. Yeah, Oscar. That's yeah. Yeah, so, so, so this prosthetic, they reckon's good in, when I'm fit enough, I can run on that, I can, you know, climb up mountains and remember the off-road walking I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, a limb that's capable of doing quite GT. a bit. GT. GT. Like a GT limb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. yeah, 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 I remember chatting to you before, it was like, um, there's now this sort of 90 grand Bluetooth controlled, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. moves your ankle, mate, that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, mate of mine's got one of them. He yeah. says to take it off and charge it up on a night yeah. with his phone. Yeah. And it, and it has, they have like, they have sensors in your calf yeah. that, that can sense when you're trying to move your oh. toes up and down and it moves your ankle yeah. for you. So. Proper, proper trick ones. I mean, that's, that's, that's full factory, that. Full factory, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's sort of third one down, is it? I don't, I don't know where it is in, in the, the kind of... order. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a basic bog stock beginner one, um, but it's, yeah, it's the GT, it's not the GT <laughs> Pro. Well, um, we're actually at Flyer Spitfire. Yeah, yeah. It's big and ill. Yeah, so my main sponsor for the, for the TT was, um, Flyspitfire.com. Uh, so that's so that's where we are. There's a Spitfire just revving up in the background, uh, and that's why we're sat in a, in a Spitfire hangar. Well, good to see you, mate. Thanks, About mate. Time. Thanks. Um, and uh, I mean, I know everyone who's on the other side of the screen will be going uh, come back soon. So uh, come back soon. Yeah. Take your time, obviously, but come back soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm dying to be back. Um, I know that you. Uh, I know that you said you're keen on some budget bike battle premiere cinema. Cinema. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. When I. Yeah. When I. Yeah. I'll be getting my tickets. Um, <laughs> backstage pass. Triple uh, A's. Groupie. Um, defo. Yeah. So yeah. I can't wait to be back. Can't wait to be riding bikes and doing cool stuff. Making, shit. making the internet great again.